Hi, how are you folks doing? This video is about the three factors that really make my CEREC CAD CAM system work well in my clinical theater. And it happens before I ever take a scan. Though this video is a blast from the past, it's on the prior version of software. In fact, it's 4.65. However, it's ethical to all versions of software, particularly the Prime Scan Now. These principles have not changed and they work for me every time when I apply them in my clinical theater. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit that bell and you'll be notified when new videos arrive on the scene. Let's go ahead and get started with the blast from the past. These principles are still working. <laughs> That's my dog barking. He's always making sure I'm safe. Hey bud, Jordan, hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? Yeah. Well, he always wants to make sure I'm safe. With all this excitement, I'm heading over to the practice. You know what was on my heart today? And by the way, welcome to my car. <laughs> What's on my heart today is I get a lot of calls with people that are struggling with CEREC. And I've been trying to categorize where the issues are. I tell you, the CEREC has been the best thing ever in my clinical theater. And I, and I got started with CEREC when it was in the red cam days and it's amazing how I flourished even with red cam so I, I know the success with CEREC is not about the efficiency of the CEREC it has more to do with how we manage our clinical theater and I want to talk about that because you have to reconsider what you're trying to do here now I'm all about margins I'm about occlusion and I'm about emergence and interproximal. I'm, I'm a nitpick on that. I'm accredited in the ACD. I used to get my joys out of doing gold foil, okay? So let's just get that across the board. You know that my expectations are high. I don't expect it to be any less than if I had a really good lab. And I don't expect to give up that quality because I'm doing CEREC or Cheerside Cat Camp. So I usually find that people that struggle with CEREC it's a natural process of, of learning a new skill set. And what you have to do is find out how you learn and how you deal with frustration. Anything good in life is gonna have frustration to it. It's, it's as simple as that. So growth is about overcoming problems. And I've always been good at that. I never find my limitations in, in what others say. It doesn't mean I don't have frustration, but what I do know is that I don't let my frustration stay very long. In other words, if they keep repeating themselves, I want to find a way to get around that. And that's what you have to do when you're in CAD CAM. You have to find a way to get around the issues. Not too many issues now. Uh, there used to be with the red CAM. If you didn't take images just the right way, or if you took more than four or five, you're going to have distortion and these restorations aren't going to fit. Well, Omnicam is really easy today. There's ways to optimize your scanning techniques. Each version of the software has new assets in it. Uh, it's really not hard. And there's there's three factors that I look for for success with CEREC. And it's before I ever pick up my camera. <laughs> it's before I ever put an image into the unit. And that is three things. And that's going to be occlusal reduction. And you got to know what material you're going to use. You want to usually know that before you start. You want to optimize your interproximal embrasures. You got to do that to create good interproximal health. You don't want food traps, you don't want point contacts. And then you got to look at the posing arch. Is there impacting cuffs on the posing arch? Because if there is, you're going to be compromising your function. Biofunction is always first. It always has been first in my clinical theater. And whenever I overlook that element, that's when I struggle. If you get enough reduction for the material you're using, if you optimize your interproximal contact, meaning you're gonna shape the teeth next door before you ever image, and then if you know what you're opposing so you don't have impacting cuss, system really is pretty seamless and you can get down a two minute design. I'm serious. And good quality. The technology is in the software. The software has intelligence to it, so why not use it? Most people struggle because they don't reduce enough. I know. I'm a clinician. I've been a clinician over 30 years, and I know I struggle with reduction. But you got to be precise. If there's one area that I'm not conservative on, and that's a close reduction, because it's more than minimal thickness, right? <laughs> 
If it's minimal thickness reduction, then you're gonna really struggle with the software because you're gonna have flat crowns and the software doesn't like to give you flat crowns. It likes to give you good morphology appeal. That's naturally within the software. It's the DNA of the software. So if you're struggling with occlusal thickness, it's because of inadequate occlusal reduction for the material you're using. So you gotta know your materials. My high strength zirconia, 0.6. Emax, one millimeter. Celtra, 1.5. Impress, 1.5. Microfels Pathic 1.5. You got to know your materials because every situation in the mouth is different. When you know what the limitations are in the mouth with function and form, you can use your critical thinking to prep for the right material. So those are things that are really important before you ever scan. That's how you start a really good workflow.